Okay, so I wanted to know, was this going to all wrap up with a nice, neat bow? Or was it going to be a mess because there's so many moving parts? I have to say, Miss Katori, your ink pen is something serious, love. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for the finale of season one of P-Valley, which would be episode eight. As I said, Miss Katori, girl, your ink pen is something serious. You really did wrap this up in a way that left us wanting more and just kept us real hype. This was... I'd have to say one of my favorite episodes of the whole season. Um, if this did not come back. Now, I'm just going to tell you all, it's actually been renewed for season two. So we got the green light for season two. So we're going back to the pack for a season two. But if it hadn't, there's enough breadcrumbs laid on the floor and they could have always opened it back up or it could have actually ended and the bow was wrapped neatly. So either way, it would be fine. If it, if it never came back, the ending, I would say solid. If, you know, we want to come back, we got nine different directions we can go. Perfect writing, in my opinion. So for me, it was a win, win, win all the way around. Katori, hats off to you. Now, let's just go into this. There's a lot of, like I said, moving pieces and moving parts and all this stuff is going on at this last night here at the Pink. When we left off, we got Autumn stuck up in the room with old Martavius or Montavius or whatever the heck his name is, ready to do harm to her, looking for his money and all of this. We immediately start to find out a lot of things that we had questions about Miss Autumn. Autumn is a former corporate accountant, which made total sense. It completely made her character make sense. All her moves and the way she moved and the way she worked with dollar figures and, and all of that, the way she moved the money around, it all made sense. She's a corporate accountant. Money is what she does. She definitely was very much that girl and not this girl. Um, but that just kind of goes to show you that all of those girls ain't that far from being that girl, okay? So don't, <laughs> don't sleep it. Anyway, um, we got everybody else going. Now, Autumn is in a whole position here. Autumn was constantly crying out for help throughout this. And this is just one of those things where the pink had kind of bitten off more than it could chew. And everybody was just all out of sorts. Usually, Uncle Clifford really did run a tight ship. But it just all went to the shits for this night. It was just too much. It was too crowded. There was too much going on. People had their own thing going on and people weren't dedicated to exactly what it is that they do like on a normal night. Too many moving pieces. You got Big Al out here trying to roll with a, a drug circle underneath Cliff Uncle Clifford's nose. You got Uncle Clifford trying to be in love with the trade. And I told y'all before you can't date the trade. You try to date the trade, you're going to have an issue. You can go play with the trade, but you can't date the trade. When you date the trade, you end up with an issue. So you got that going on. Um, you got just mess, mess and pandemonium going on. So anyway, she's back there. Remember, they said no tents out. First thing she did, very smart. You know, there's cameras everywhere. She took her top off. She took her top off because generally, if you're doing wrong, 
diamonds are going to show up. You ain't just going to get anybody. You're going to get diamond. And that's who you need for Montavious is diamond. Nobody else. You need diamond. Diamond's preoccupied because you... <sighs> Let me get to that. Anyway. Okay, so Lil Murder is back here and he's ready to do his thing. So he's doing his thing, and I'm looking. Listen, let me tell you how good Lil Murder looked. Lil Murder had like all my favorite stuff going on, child. Had this blue fur. I said, Oh, quit your plan, quit your plan, quit your plan. This blue fur coat. Everything. Everything. These cute little pants. He had his hair dyed blue. I, I I said, okay, I'll go for it. I'll, I'll play with the Smurf for one night. You know, he just looked good. He really did. He really looked good. M Mississippi. That bitch was so goddamn clean. With feathers and rhinestones. You know, that's my fur, feather, and rhinestones. You got my attention. He back there ready. She ready. She nervous. He nervous. Because remember, it's her first night being there doing her thing with being a, like a person that people are coming to see and with her new, her newfound fame with Mercedes in the house. Mercedes is running around with this badass pearl. Everybody was just done. It was really on 10. And the club was truly popping. So they get out there, they do their they do their number, okay? They do their number. They bust out with the new song. Child, when I tell you they were jamming, 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 and then they had all the other day all these other dancers and they had choreography and they were breaking it down and he was doing this whole little thing with this M I crooked letter crooked letter I crooked letter crooked letter I hump back hump back I and that goddamn Mississippi Mississippi was back there busting it down. You hear me? It was everything. It was everything. And then there was this point where he kind of got into his little thing like got into the groove and then he kind of looked and it was like everything slowed down and he's just looking at the crowd and I was like what's getting ready to happen you get ready to mess up is you get ready to get like all stuck and he's like no he's looking he's like oh my god like they are really like here for me and they singing my song and he just was like okay shit I didn't arrive and he just start giving it to him that fool came up out of that fur coat and threw that coat in the audience. Baby, can I tell you that Uncle Clifford went twirling on by there? Some big chick, honey, had done got the coat, honey, and Uncle Clifford said, bitch. <laughs> as soon as he threw it, Uncle Clifford was like, nigga. <laughs> and him and Uncle Clifford and the girl is tussling over the coat. I said, Hey, bitch, if you don't give me that goddamn coat. So I cracked up laughing at that. But he was up there performing his little heart out. Did his little thing. The talent scout has actually shown up. They finished doing their number. So we end up having the talent scout, Wody, which is the manager, the, the, his manager, and he pulls Mississippi and Lil Murder, and they all go to a VIP area. That little VIP area, it, it start popping right away. We figure out that the talent scout actually is not there for Lil Murder. He's not even all that impressed by Lil Murder. He is really on to who they've been seeing all over social media, which is Mississippi. His whole mindset is really stuck on Mississippi. And he referred to her in a way that was, he was absolutely correct. He was there to make Mississippi a star and he would take Little Murder along if he had to. But his whole conversation was just off. And he came down there trying to talk to them like they was some old backwoods ass country hicks. Trying to tell them about how he could work them into a 360 deal. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. He throwing out, oh, Nike and this, that, and the other. What the hell did Mississippi got to do with Nike? 
And the more he talked, the more he incriminated himself. And Woody's like picking up on it. And then there were a lot of interruptions coming through. Because at a point, we had an issue. Uncle Clifford came back there. And this is where the trade and being outside of the closet situation came into play. Uncle Clifford came back there and she was very... She wasn't being the Uncle Clifford that we've been. She was now this Uncle Clifford who is actually dating LaMarcus. Who just happens to be Lil Murder. But now he's Lil Murder, okay? And it's like, this ain't the time. You know, she came back all comfortable. And how y'all doing tonight? This, that thing, and the other. And he kind of snapped at her. You know, keep it up the facade. So we about that business back here right now. And basically, shoot her away. Now, generally, Uncle Clifford would have had a, a quick, snappy comeback. But she did because that's her man now. I said, girl, you making mistakes, bitch. You making mistakes. You all up here in your feelings. And you making mistakes. You already know what it gives, bitch. You too old for this. So now I'm sitting there. Now I done got mad with Uncle Clifford. Because, bitch, you know better. You know better. I don't even know why you even took what actually happened personally because you already know what it gives. You know what it gives. Y'all on. This is this is part of y'all's act. Honey, this ain't what y'all thought we was. This is P Valley. This is not Noah's Ark. So she was totally out of sorts. I understood and she should have understood what was going on, he felt bad for doing it, so now he's off. The man ain't talking right. Shit in the room is getting... Okay? Wody is picking up on it. He And, and the more the, the talent scout talk, the more he's telling his story. He done told him, basically, he need to get rid of the DJ. I'll get you a real DJ. I'll get you a real producer. Try to split up the family. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Filling Mississippi's head up with all this bullshit. When really, do you really want to make her a star? Or do you really just want to screw her? Because you got to remember what you're looking at. Mississippi, a bad bitch. So, are you just really wanting to screw her? Or, what, or, or you want to screw her and screw her? You know? You you want to get her and, and, and just do her and just... Fuck her over, period. So it just ain't nothing going the way that it was supposed to. Then he even got bold enough to say, basically, to to get rid of Wody and give him a real manager. I was like, oh, God. I'm like, yeah, he's a whole lot. You sit and Wody put everything together, and then you sit in Wody's face and tell Wody how you going to replace him? Really? And Wody told him, no, we ain't doing none of that. Come on. You know, once they all ended up separating out, well, he told them, you can get on up out of here. It ain't even about that. If you ain't coming to get him, then all of this is over because I didn't bring you here for Keyshawn. I brought you here for a little murder. And he's like, little murder is, you know, a dime a dozen. And he's telling her all about being a black Barbie and all this. And then she made the mistake of actually sitting over and kind of spitting off a couple of uh, rhyming words. And he's like, oh, you got bars too? See, I'm right here. This is what I'm talking about. I'm with this black Barbie shit right here. And that's exactly what she gives. She is very much another Cardi B or another Nicki Minaj. I mean, she fits that whole mold. But again, we already know he could run her over. Run her right over. In the midst of all that, so everybody's throwing off the deals off the table. All of that's just a is just a it's a wash. That that just came and went. We watched it all just come and go in 20 minutes, basically. Now Uncle Clifford's mad. She done went back there. She back there throwing back shots and 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 just all in her fellas. That's a bitch. Get yourself together, whore. Everybody's still doing these things and not paying attention to the monitors real a whole lot. 
Uncle Clifford did catch it. Was like, that bitch back there without no top on. Calls Diamond. Diamond, go back in the paradise room. Get that bitch back there with that top on. Anybody got time for all that? Al said he would do it. Big Al was supposed to be going to do it, but he done went out back. Because Gidget's boyfriend's out there with the drugs that they supposed to be running through the club. That was just the weird thing. How y'all going to run the, club, the drugs through the club and y'all think y'all losing the club tomorrow? So if y'all go and load these drugs up, had them into, in the club, how you getting back in? They're going to be padlocked tomorrow. So that didn't really make sense. But whatever. Um, You know, where there's crooks, there's a way. Yeah, they'll break in and get it. But anyway, so we got all that going on. Meanwhile, there was another interruption at the door when all of the business deal part was going down, which was Derek out there calling for Keyshawn and calling her by name. And the little talent scout was like, see, I can take you away from all this where you won't be dealing with no customers like that. He's like, I'm not no customer. You know, he didn't got all in his feelings because, see, there was too many people paying attention to Mississippi. And he's jealous because that's how that type of guy is. He's a woman beater. He's a hater. And he got a little narcissism wrapped all up in there, too. He's a whole issue and very dangerous. So she had told him she spoke out of turn in character as well. And when I heard her speak, when she told him, I said I'll be, I said, oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't raise your voice out. Now, you know he's going to whoop your ass. You know that's your ass right there. So you might as well make the best of the night because when we see you again, girl, you're going to have four black eyes. So that was that. So she get herself out. She goes out and she's sitting up there talking about, okay, well, um, you know, I was just trying to take care of the business, Derek. I'm working, this, that, and the other. He told her to go get her stuff and meet him in the car. Go get your stuff and meet me in the car. And if you don't, he said, I'm going to go take a piss. And when I go and I get to that car, if you ain't there, you're going to be sorry. She said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, am I going to be sorry when I get home? Anyway? Yeah, bitch. You're going to get your ass whooped one way or the other. It don't make no difference. So, dummy goes out. She got to go on outside like she posted. Stupid. But, Diamond has seen all of it. Diamond has seen every bit of it. Y'all hold that part of the story right there. We're going to get back to it. Let's talk about Lil Murder. Lil Murder makes his way back immediately. When he gets free, he makes his way back there to talk to Uncle Clifford. Baby, and Uncle Clifford just made me even more mad because she's still in her feelings and basically told him she was basically pissed off about him chomping her off and saying, you're the one that said you didn't want to be screwing in the dark and all that and, and you wanted to be up front with it and all this and blah 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 say blah say blah and he's like don't know how, what to say or how to appease her because he don't know he don't know how to date you know what I mean he don't know how to date gay and he don't know how to play he don't know what he's doing and he's trying to tell her I, I want to be what you want me to be and what I want to be and I'm trying to be what I need to be but I don't know what I'm doing she didn't, that, that bitch can't get out her feelings. She can't get out her feelings. And she's like, you know, when you get it together and you ready to actually come out and be LaMarcus, you know where to find me. But until then, you just get on out of here. And she just, she done broke up with him. I was sick. You're too old, bitch. You know, you know better. If, if Uncle Clifford was a young queen, Okay, but you know better. You know how this game goes, girl. So I was I was so irritated with her. So irritated. But I get it. I get it. Girl, you got caught up. Season two, bitch. You better get it and fix it and something, bitch. Anyway, so that, we got that going on. So he got to go back out work because he's still working. He's still got to perform. So he's back on stage. And he and thank God he, he's in his moment and he's still doing his thing. Talent Scout ain't looking no more, but whatever. Still, there's the internet. So he's doing all doing his thing. Now, by this time, let's go back to the room. By this time, Uncle Clifford's over there and then Uncle Clifford sees something else. Because see, now at this time, now Mercedes 
has actually gotten her mind together. She's had a whole night of her own going on because the coach that showed up and she back there dancing for the coach and she asked the coach for $10,000. To do, he basically let him know about the gym and all that stuff. He tells her, "All right, well, you give me part ownership of your gym." She's like, "Nigga, no, no, you no, I got your nose open and you know it. So you can either give me the ten thousand dollars or get out my face." And he says, "We could do it that way, or the other way is you give me you, basically, you know, and I put you up." take you off this pole and put you in a penthouse like I've been trying to do. She's like, well, what about your wife? And he's like, my wife already know. I said, oh, girl, no, don't get into that. Do not. And she had to think about it for a minute. She was thinking. And she's like, let me, let me get back to you on that. Now, all while she's doing this, her wheels are spinning about all the different little things about that damn DeMarcus when she made his acquaintance and the way that Autumn was acting. And then it hit her. Then it hit her. She was like, mm -mm. something ain't right. Something just ain't right. So she said, let me go on and make my way on back. She tells the coach to hold on for a minute, just chill. So she goes back to the room. And in the midst of all this, at the door earlier, the little boy, the little fat boy who always was wearing Maine's uh, anklet, he didn't got a fake ID and that's not, was coming to the club since it was the last night. Diamond had let him in. He said, go on, little nigga, go on in there and enjoy the last night of the pack. So he let him in. As soon as he got in, he made his way to the room where... Mercedes was and end up giving her the paper that Maine saw with Autumn's picture on it telling her real name Haley and all of that. In the picture, she noticed the ring. In the picture, there was a picture of the ring with DeMarcus and she thought about the ring that she saw on his hand. See, because she's always into the details. And she'd be breaking niggas down as she run up on them. And she took, and she's like, oh my God. Told the coach, I'm going to be back. Just chill out. I'm going to think about what we talked about. Just chill out. She went flying in these hills. She flying. She trying, she goes to the room. She banging for Uncle Clifford. She banging for a diamond. She can't find nobody. So she rolled to the room herself. She goes and gets in there on the room. She bangs on the door. Autumn was great. Go open the door. He's going to tell her, snatch her all up, choking her out, and told her, you don't move, because he didn't already at this point told her basically that the guy she worked with to get the account set up, he's the one that gave her up, because he gave one account, he gave the information about one account, which was the, the major account, the, the main account that she was linking everything to. And he said, you know, he was holding him over a building while all the blood rushed to his head. And right before he died is when he gave her up. And he'd have been all up and down the Delta looking for her. And then, you know, Chuckalisa is where he was tracing his 250 grand back to. So he's like, you know, threatening to kill her if he don't, she don't give him his money and on and on and on. So she was going to go break for the door. He like, that. I don't do it. I bust you up, bitch. So he goes to the door. It's Mercedes. Mercedes like bottle service. And then she basically forces her way into the room. She tells him, she says, yeah. She says, he's like, we ain't order no bottles. She's like, oh no, they're, they're complimentary with the, this paradise room. You get the bottles and an extra set of tits. So she roll her ass in there. Now the two of them is in there together. And they trying to handle it. And she basically calls her Haley. Okay, so he knows and she knows. She's on. She knows what's going on. They get in there. It ends up being a whole mess. Baby, they get to doing their little thing and they in there dancing at first before they gave up the secret. And she take her top off. And they're basically making these cry for help and nobody's paying attention to the monitors. And they in there, so, you know, Mercedes, she a rider, so she got, you know, she over the shit. 
she ends up, um, he's like, all right, he wants to get Mercedes out of the room. He tells her, um, he said, I need some, we need some more bottles, some fresh bottles. She going to say, oh, but your bottle ain't, it's just half empty. And you ain't drank all of that. He takes it and pours it out on the floor and tell her basically, I'll go get your ass out of here and go get us some more liquor. She like, oh, okay. So then Mercedes becomes Mercedes. She takes the bottle and breaks the shit on the wall and <laughs> go for him, okay? So they get the rumbling and shit. And then him and her and then Autumn, it's a whole mess. And they rumbling. And he ended up overpowering Mercedes and got Mercedes with the damn bottle in her throat. And she's like, girl, run and get somebody. This thing ain't getting ready to do shit. You know how Mercedes. And he's like, you better go get my money. You got five minutes to give me my money. She's like, don't do that and just stop. Because Autumn knows he'll kill her. And told him, you know, he said, you got five minutes. She said, the money is here in the club. I've been stashing the money here in the club. It's here. Don't hurt her. Just let me go and go get the money. I'll give you the money. So he got the bottle up to her. Dacky choking her and all this shit. <sighs> so ends up. Autumn's like, all right. So she ends up going to run out and leave to go get the go get this money, supposedly. But what she's running to go get is the gun out of the locker. Remember the the the, the pink gun that she put in the locker? She runs to go get the gun out of the locker. She run, she's putting her clothes on, putting like jeans and a top on in the locker. And the gun's gone. Remember she actually gave old Keyshawn, a.k.a. Mississippi, the code to the locker? Gun gone. So Autumn puts her clothes on, grabs the bag with the money, and hits it. When we see this whore again, this whore's out in the car getting ready to leave. At this time, DeMarcus is back there having a conversation with Mercedes and telling her she ain't gonna come back for you. She ain't gonna come back because that's what that's she like that. That bitch is gonna run. She gonna run. That's what she did. I had to chase her all the way here. And she like, no, she ain't. She's coming. She's coming back. He basically let her know, I'm gonna kill you anyway, because he's getting ready. You know, that bitch ain't coming back. Got my money. I'm pissed. So she out there. I said, all right. Now leave that all right there. I'm going to leave all that there. Go back to the bathroom. We in the bathroom. Old Diamond that walked up behind um, Derek. And he says to Derek, hey, why are you snatching all up on Keyshawn like that? Up here in the club. He tell him, mind your business. Mind your business. He's like, you come in here beating on these women? That is my business. That bastard had the nerve to look him right in his face and tell him, I don't know why Keyshawn want to come down here and fool with you dusty niggers. Baby. When I tell you, Diamond gave him five to the face, honey, douche, I said, uh-huh, get him. And they got the rumbling. But baby, Derek ain't no punk, for real. We thought Derek was like a pushover. No, Derek is not even small. They All the frames that they've shot up to this point, Derek looks small. No, baby, Derek is a whole cornbread-fed trailer park whole white boy and baby they when i tell you they were in there rumbling they was rumbling they rumble and rumble and rumble all the way out so they ended up there end up being a gun involved they they tussling over this gun they getting it that getting it going they end up all out the bathroom into the middle of the club rumbling gun goes off people running everywhere people running it's crazy it's just pandemonium in there. So by this time, Uncle Clifford 
ends up back in the room. He's calling for Diamond. Can't get Diamond. Can't find Big Al. Looks up at the film, up at the cameras, and at this point, Autumn then got back out of the car and came back in. She came back from Mercedes, thank goodness. Her conscience got the best of her. She came back from Mercedes. She go back to the room and she tell him, here's the money. Mercedes had already said to him, you don't even want that money, do you? He didn't. He want her. He wants to, to he wanted to kill her, but he wanted to torture her first and just do it because he's sadistic. He wanted to do all that. He want Haley. Um, come back. She got the money. They going back and forth. She give him the money. They going back and forth talking. He also divulged about being part of this Delta, some other kind of order group and told her, you know, if something happened to me, they going to come because they all know where I'm at. And now he said, I'll, I'll drown everybody in this club with this bitch's blood. And then the Delta, they'll come down here and just burn, just burn this whole club down to the ground. So we like, okay, so here we're dealing with a whole order, a whole cult that you a part of. Which has to do with that little ring he had on. And they get going. Next thing you know, they hear the shots in the club. They're like, what the hell is that? In the midst of that happening, they get enough time. It threw him off. Maybe they all get to rumbling again. Now you got Mercedes and Autumn is jumping him. Trying to fight him and trying to get out. Because they, they're locked in. So they got to get the code to get back out. So they get the fight in, and it's just a whole big mess. They fight and fight and fight. And by this time, Uncle Clifford sees all this going on in the, the camera. You see the two of them fighting with Demarcus. He like, oh, hell no. So he goes, there's a box that Diamond had brought back there from all the stuff he was confiscating off of people. Coming in, there was nunchucks and, and brass knuckles and all this. Uncle Clifford reaching there and grab a gun up out of there. And he run on back to the room and Uncle Clifford ends up letting himself in the room and they in there rumbling. He go in there, now Uncle Clifford in there rumbling. Baby, they get to getting it. They fighting, fighting, fighting. And <laughs> it's so funny. So you know when you throw a queen into the fight, that's when you start hearing somebody say, uh-uh, fuck you, bitch. I said, now where did you come with all, <laughs> all this colorful commentary? Because you got two women back here fighting. Ain't nobody calling nobody bitches. You put one queen in the mix, and now they say, fuck you, bitch, and fighting, fighting. Uncle Clifford rumbling with old boy. He done knocked them two down, and it's him and Uncle Clifford. They rumbling. They fighting over the gun. A whole mess. So that's going on. Now just hold that. So we got them in the room. They in the paradise room rumbling, rumbling. Out in the club, there's pandemonium. Everybody running everywhere. Um, then you see Diamond and Derek is fighting, fighting, fighting. By this time, that gun that slid across the floor, Diamond finally got Derek where he wanted him. And when I say he was getting ready to beat Derek's goddamn head in, Derek was done. He was going to kill him. He was going to kill him. At that point. And this is where I got thrown off. And I lost one of my characters. Gidget had come running out. And she was like, girl, Derek and Diamond is in there tearing up the club. That's who they got to fight in. They got, they got a gun. They fighting it. Girl, they... Mississippi go running back in. She's like, no, girl, don't go. Ran back in there. So now Mississippi standing there. She pulled a gun. And she said, get off of him. Get off of him. And I'm like, wait a minute. And we flashed back to the scene. We said, get off of him. Get off of him. Diamond was winning at this point. And sure enough, it was just what it was. This bitch done pulled gun on Diamond. She got Diamond at gunpoint, telling Diamond to get off of Derek. I beg your pardon, ma'am. 
I beg your pardon, Miss Mississippi bitch. And she told her, I'm sorry, Diamond. Just get off of him. Leave him alone. Let him go. I'm looking at Diamond. And Diamond's face, he was so hurt. He was he was confused at first. And then when he processed what it was, he was so hurt. You could see it all over his face. Now, me personally, I wasn't hurt. I was mad as hell. I wanted to take and pistol whip Mississippi at that point. I am so done with Mississippi. I hope Derek take you home and beat the goddamn shit out of you. Diamond ended up leaving because you hear another gunshot. Diamond, and it's coming from back by the Paradise Room. Diamond goes and grabs the gun, his gun up off the floor, goes running to the Paradise Room. So now we're outside the Paradise Room. Diamond's coming down the hall, and then we hear... Boom, boom, boom. Three shots. Three bullet holes in the door. And then we just see blood running from up underneath the door. It's like, oh, shit. So now we don't know who's who didn't got it. Because we got Uncle Clifford in there. We got DeMarcus in there. We got Autumn in there. And we got Autumn in there. Who's fucked up and the shit's running under the door? And it cuts away. That's it. Cuts away. And the next thing you know, we see Uncle Clifford's grandma. All dressed in black. Dressed for a funeral. And she crying. And I said, I know good and well. They ain't killed Uncle Clifford. I know good and goddamn well. Katori, you ain't wrote Uncle Clifford out. Now, girl, I get real hot with my pen. But I know you ain't wrote Uncle Clifford out. Then we see goddamn Uncle Clifford, this black fascinator, a thigh high boot, I s and that bitch is dressed. She's ready. I said, not him the gray. He had these braids to the back and had all this going. I said, the bitch, <laughs> love Uncle Clifford. <laughs> him and the grandmother, <laughs> I said, both you two whores is a mess. Child, if it didn't look like the opening for a drag show where all the girls said, we all will get dressed in black. Honey, it was, they were on their way to the auction. They on their way to the auction. This is the next day. We see them talk about pandemonium at the, uh, the pink, but they ain't say nothing about nobody dying. They said a word on the news about nobody dying. Just... Pandemonium and a fight breaks out at the pink. Shots fired and a fight break out, but they ain't saying nothing about nobody, no bodies or nothing like that. So here they are on their way downtown to town, you know, town hall, and they going in there for this auction. You got all the hookers. Well, they're not hookers, I'm sorry. All the strippers dressed like they all in the drag show together. They all overdressed downtown. They pulls up in there. You got Andre and his wife is there. The mayor is dressed in a red suit in red. And the devil that he is, you know. <laughs> he and the first thing he do, wait, look, so you know grandma's already showing off. She already showing her ass. She's showing her ass before she left home. She gonna drive. If you don't get your blind ass, <laughs> she said I went down there so many times, I could drive. I said, girl, stop. <laughs> stop. You're blind. You're not driving nowhere. You're a damn clown. She <laughs> she get down there. So the mayor walk up to her and gonna say, I just want to give you my condolences now for the pink. She going to say, fuck you, Titus, <laughs> to the mayor. They's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> right in the right in the courtroom. Fuck you, Titus. <laughs> he get away from her, leave her alone, right? <laughs> they go in the back. They sitting down there, everybody there. Um, they go and they get ready to start the auction. Before all this, hold that right there. Let's go over to the gym and Mercedes. Mercedes is okay. Mercedes is alive. And she got her hair 
to the back. And she says to her mother, because her mother come walking up. She said, Mama, you, you always said that God is a forgiving God and he forgives, you know, he gives second chances. He's a God of second chance. She said, yes, baby, and third, fourth, and fifth chances. But remember, I'm dead to you, remember? So you won't have to call on your God for this. Mm -hmm. And turned around and walked away and goes inside of her new building that she done bought with Mercedes's money. And closed the door in her face. And Mercedes is out there groveling and banging on the door. Mama, mama, mama. Now, see, y'all always hear me talking about sticking to the lakes and the rivers that you used to. That ain't always a good thing. Because, see, again, she is as raggedy as her mother is. Her mother is the closest thing to godliness is that she knows her mother is a preacher. Whether she's a good preacher or a bad preacher, her mother is who taught her the gospel. Her mother's the one to drag her to church and all that. So she go right back to her because now we done already figured out whoever's dead, rather it is, because it's one of the two, it's either Montavious or it's Autumn that is dead. We know now Mercedes is the person that pulled the trigger because that's where her issue is. And that's why she's talking about she needs God's forgiveness and her mother just pulling it. And trying to just be an evil like she is. So I said, okay. So that was it. That's where we stuck with her. Let's go on back down to to downtown to, to the auction. They go in there and they get to starting the bidding on the pink. They start. Andre starts. They said, we're going to start at 55. Andre, 56,000. All at once, then we see a broad come in in all white with big sunglasses. I said, come through, Miss Goddamn Autumn. Miss Autumn goes stand in the corner. And they all look like, ain't this a bitch? What's she doing here? They're like, oh, okay. They thought she'd have ran off and left. And she come in, and she bid 75000 they said, what? <laughs> and then it just starts back and forth, back and forth, back with her, her and Andre. Back and forth. And then it gets all the way up. And they right there about 200, you're getting close to 200,000. And Andre said, I got the car. I, I don't have clearance for but 200,000. And the God daddy's like, what? I'm no good. Well, you know, let that bitch come in here and I'll be, it ain't get ready to happen. And he grabbed the paddle from Andre. Andre's trying to call the his boss to get a clearance to go hire. God daddy then said 205 already. Autumn cracked their goddamn face and said $250,000. Baby, Andre just hung up the phone. <laughs> He just hung up the phone. Fuck it. He just hung up the phone. And Titus is looking at him. And then Titus jumped up. He's going to say, well, that's all right. That's all right. Because, see, you know, the rules, the rules of the auction, you got to have the money on hand. So do you have $250,000? That bitch went up there to the bench. And turned that bag over and dropped them 250 stacks right there on the floor. I said, come through, Autumn. Child, it was an upset. You hear me? They sitting there looking. <clears throat> so that was that. Done. Autumn bought the pink. Goes downstairs. They go to leave the courthouse. Autumn standing down there. Andre looking at Autumn. Autumn looking at Andre. They exchanged some looks. Baby, Andre's wife done looked and she done caught it. And baby, she went stomping on out of the... Because he tried to talk her out of even coming to the auction. She caught it. She got all she needed with the looks, baby. 
A look is worth a thousand words. Maybe she marched on out of there. I said, oh, Andre, oh, Andre. God daddy told Andre, you done fucked around. And I think you done fucked up this whole deal with your bullshit. He said, I'll bust a cap in your ass, nigga. I said, <laughs> I just fell out laughing. I was like, child, it is what it is. Child, they all end up leaving. You see Autumn talking to um, Uncle Clifford. She asked Uncle Clifford, asked her, why'd you do it? She said, I figured it. I owed you. I owed you. Now you owe me. Partner. And child, they did a handshake. So now we got Uncle Clifford and Autumn for the pink. So I thought that was it. That was all done. Mm -mm. Last thing we see, we go down to the, to the pink. They clean up. There's glass and shit everywhere. So they cleaning up. Grandma down there, she having a conversation with Autumn. She making a drink. I about fell out. She going, <laughs> gotta get a drink. So Autumn, she said, yes, it's called a so-and-so, a so-and-so. One day down here when Isaac Hayes was here, he did this. And she's telling all these stories. And she go to get his drink. The Autumn, Autumn said, I don't, ma'am, I don't drink. She said, well, what kind of hoe is you? She said, he, and Uncle Clifford said, Grandma, she going to say what? She'll say, okay, I'm sorry. Ho, what is your name? <laughs> she said, Autumn. She said, close enough. <laughs> oh, no, she told her, Haley. Haley, she said, close enough. I said, oh, she's that old lady is a mess. She's a mess. By this time, Mercedes walk in, child. He done told Mercedes, girl, don't look like you never going to get to do your last dance. And that's when we got the confirmation that Mercedes is the one that pulled it pulled the trigger because she asked him is it all is it taken care of and he said it's taken care of it's been taken care of and she like all right but she just too through they give her a drink and she's like but last night and that's when grandma by this time she took her blind ass she up on the pole standing there by the pole she gonna say last night was last night baby that's it today is the day it's a new day baby and that's that deal. And then Haley says that's right. Last night was last night and it's almost time to open the pank. And that's where we cut out at. It was really, really good. Really, really good. Like I said, we got a lot of stuff to work with to go on to season two. But if this had ended right here, <clears throat> right here, it would have been like the ending to a really good movie. It really would have. So, Katori, hats off. You did this. You did this. This was really, really good. I'm glad I did decide to review this. It was good. Really good show, child. We have fell in love with some, some of these characters. I need to know where in the hell Little Murder is. Damn it. I don't really care where Keyshawn is. I am totally done with Mississippi. Totally done, Mississippi. But whatever. I will see you all for season two of P Valley. Like Haley slash Autumn said, honey, it's time to open the pank. See y'all in season two. Later. <laughs>